Thank you very much, Shocks, and greetings to all you eSports fans. I'm Devin Pirate, thanks, Young, and I'm here with everyone's favorite Dane. It's Martin DeFisio Linga. Now, I know there's not a lot of choices, but that's okay. You're definitely my favorite, too. Hey, I don't care if there's only one, two, or three, five Danes. As long as I'm number one, I'm happy. Fair enough, man. Now, number one in this game, I think it's going to be a little harder to call. Both teams coming off a loss yesterday. Yeah, it's time to panic, I guess. I mean, you know, I mean, 0% win HDK. rate so far. We, we just had on quick stats. Yeah. We had quick shot with the dumb, dumb I've been, stats I've been before. I've been trying to block that one out of my mind. But I know. Here's the thing, though. Like, like HK had a very close game, and that, that was a backdoor yes. that ended it. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Rocket got rolled. <laughs> oh, they got destroyed. I think it was, like, one of the biggest goal leads I've ever seen in a game when G2 Esports took them down. However, it was a composition that kind of got destroyed. Uh, that wasn't supposed to fall that far down. New game. Uh, we're only in day two here of the EULCS summer split, so still a lot of things that can happen. H2K uh, actually played a great Zoe yesterday. Now they don't want to risk Rocket taking it as a first pick. Looks like the Rise will be banned away as well. Now we've seen all sorts of kookiness on patch 8.11. Of course, Rocket was one of those teams that did elect to take your standard Zyra Khan in the bottom true. side. They got a crit aided carry. Uh, it could have maybe worked. However, everything, again, as we highlighted before, just kind of fell apart for Rocket, so they never got to a point where they could use it. Tarek ban to avoid some of their gold funneling strategy, or as Jesses wants me to call it, their minkler for some reason. That's a weird one. I, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into that, but what I will get into is the fact that the Talia's also banned away. Now, they, H2K, I mean, clearly were watching uh, yesterday when actually Joko was the one that took that one on the rift and maybe had a little bit of success on it. Talia, of course, yeah. in the jungle has been somewhat popular. Around the world, everyone agrees that Talia is a fantastic early game jungle pick at the moment after some of the changes that now means less AoE coming, but more single target damage, obviously, from Talia specifically, and more movement speed when she just moves around. Darius ban, that's an interesting one. I and think Aurelia. Okay, Aurelia ban is normal, but Darius is one of those picks where I kind of feel like whenever I watch him, I'm like, yeah, he's strong, he's good. Uh, but I always know that he's weak against a lot of kite and long range poke and so on. I just remember the balls pentakill at Worlds the other year, man, so uh, I'm always scared of the You're Darius. in Europe, so you're supposed to say the source pentakill. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay, well, you know, we can, we can go into it as well. The Vlad's locked in, though. Now, we expect this one bot lane, I'm feeling. Uh, triple flex. So uh, that is one I'm of the great things. I'm laying on the line here. I'm going to say it's bot. All right. Pyro saying bot lane. I'm sticking to triple flex for now. Lulu, uh, I always like that. We've seen a lot more just Lulu standard mid lane mm -hmm. now. Uh, she does so well in these different skirmishes that you always have around the mid lane. And mid lane control, as we know, with the Rift Scarter being important, is so, so crucial. Can still go down to bottom lane. But I think we all agree that with players like Sheriff, we want to see big damage dealers. And I don't care if it's AP damage dealers or AD, but I just want to see him be one of the main carries. And this is a good pick. I like Nocturne. Nocturne already locked in. I can I can feel Vettius smiling from here, to be honest. So there's a lot it's of damage. Jungle, still, but it's, Nocturne. it's definitely going to be the jungle. Maybe not the mid for selfie. We'll see how it actually pans out. I mean, I, I'm not actually confident in almost any of the selections except the Vladimir right now. Let's see what Rocket lock in next. They've still got two more picks on rotation. I think we also got a highlight that Shook did play the Nocturne yesterday, and it was not very very successful, at least the first 25 minutes. Took him Ooh. a while before we got the first ulti. Wow, okay. Lissandra. Interesting. Now okay. this one, uh, you normally, I guess, would think mid lane Lissandra, but at this point, uh, that's a lot of lanes you can still go towards, depending on what kind of combo you want. Do you want an all-in bot lane with Lissandra? There you go. Could very well do. Now they're hovering on the Graves pickup. This was something that picked up some steam several patches back in the jungle position, and it will be locked in right now. Do you expect that to be the same for Memento? I think that's going to be jungle Graves, yeah. It's one of the few I've not really seen moved around too much. Uh, wants to try and match the Nocturne in the pure 1v1. So because Nocturne is a lot more about actually engaging with ulties and catching people off guard. Fiddlesticks has become one of the best picks in the current meta. It was actually banned in a lot of games in LCK today because he just provides so much push. Please. Hecarim, no, take the fiddlesticks. Yeah, there we're we go. selfie trolling for just I know, a he's trolling, he locks Memento. It. I mean, this was such a sick clutch pick in, in the Heimer Fiddle bottom lane. I feel like Rocket have to ban that Heimerdinger away now. Fun fact, fiddlesticks was also an old school counter pick to Lissandra. Because you can queue up the fear when Lissandra claws into water, so the fear basically comes instantly as she shows up with the claw. And it's very difficult then for Lissandra to actually ult anything herself or someone else, because she almost instantly will just get feared, and then you can just burn her down, because she's very, very squishy. So Fiddlesticks, back in my day, 2013. We gotta go way back I to know. figure that one out. Lissandra was used so often, 
and physics was always one of the key answers. Also because if you walk into a fight, as Alessandra, random silence that hits you, and suddenly you can't do anything because you're so focused on actually getting that one engage that gives you a massive AoE zone, and that can get denied by Fiddle. Yeah, there goes the Aatrox man. I'm already liking though what H2K have adapted with because yesterday, you, you said it right, like we want to see Sheriff on a damage dealer. I was not a huge fan of that Karma Soraka combo. It, sure, it's never going to die, but it's also never going to do anything. It was tough for them, uh, even though they actually played really well uh, as a team in the late game, it was hard for them to just consistently have enough damage. It was like poke, 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 and just stay back all the time, wait for someone to get caught out. And that's obviously what happens if you don't have a lot of consistent damage dealers in your lineup. Now they have a Nocturne again. Uh, Lulu Fiddlesticks is a bot lane for sure with a lot of push, but you can gank that. You can definitely target it with things like Lissandra and a jungler. I never thought I'd see the day when uh, a team that Freddy's coaching bans Mundo. Oh, uh, his own Mundo. Talking a little of history here. All now right. it looks like there are a couple of those stock standard uh, as they are. AD carries left up and available. Everyone remembers what Han Sama was able to do yesterday on this Draven. to Sheriff feel oh, as confident? Baby. And he does. I'm loving this bot lane. Anyone saying that you can't play the carries, please, it has now been proven wrong so many times. Draven is locked in here. On the side of HK, big change from the Karma. We saw Sheriff play, and exactly what we want from him. We want him on a massive damage dealer. So it's looking like Lulu mid lane with Fiddle support next to the Draven, and we're just missing the top lane pick. I think they want to see where exactly Vladimir Lissandro will go on the side of oh, Rocket. We got Pike! We got Pike there. All right, oh, that's an all in bot lane. Oh, this is going to be fun. Rocket, they have a few tricks up their own sleeve, and well, we got to take a look at what this guy can do. Assassin support, baby. Oh, I saw. He is so good at engaging. He's so good in these pick comps where he can just catch you because he has dash, stealth, a hook. Like, there's so many things that makes playing against Pike very, very difficult as long as he can move around and actually set up plays with his team. He's a horrible defensive support. You want to always look for picks. Yeah, and to top it off, We've also got a Ziggs thrown in there as well. Now, normally this is where be, where I would be getting really excited, but with the Pike being locked in here in EU, we finally get to see this one happen. So I assume if Vladimir Alessandro will be the two solo laners on the side of Rocket, it's going to be just a Chilgat that can stack magic resist no matter who he is against. If it is Vladimir top, then it is a good, good matchup for Chogath. Actually, I think against both, he will be more than fine because he can actually handle the wave early on. And as I said before, he can just stack magic resistance. Rocket, though, has a lot of damage. Yes, that is, they do. Like, even their support deals a ton of damage. And he actually assassinates people, that death from below. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I will be the first to say I was wrong. It's Vlad top, it's Europe. I've been watching too much LCK. It could also be Vlad Bartolome, uh, Bartolene, as you highlighted, but now with the comms locked in, we can see it is sitting towards the top side. And I, we're going to talk a lot about Pike in game, but we, we can't forget about Lissandra. The fact she is actually picked in this one here. Uh, there is so much pick potential with Pike and Lissandra together. If Pike ever gets to roam around a mid lane, it's going to be almost impossible to avoid that combination. It's either Pike finding you first with a stun and a hook, or it's just Lissandra point and click onto you and you're suddenly locked in place. And then this Pike can just hook and throw you over his shoulder. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of squishy players on HK's side and there's a lot of damage from Rockets. That is very true. And HK definitely have a lot of damage dealers of their own, but it's a little bit more mixed. You've got some defense. You have the Cho'Gath up in the top lane. You have the Lulu. That wild growth is still something you cannot underestimate. But if I'm Sheriff, I'm calling for backup at this point. Well, you can build a BT. Then you have a Lulu buffing you up as well. I don't know, if Chef gets past the early game, I think he's fine. Well, we'll find out. H2K had a very close one. A rough loss yesterday up against Giants. Will they be able to bounce back and take the win on day two versus Rocket? Or will the Rocket be in the bag? Let's find out. We're on to Summoner's Rift, baby. Very, very fun pick and ban phase. Some surprises with uh, mainly the Lissandra being a surprising pick. I think on the side of H2K, it is fairly quote unquote standard. I hope this never gets old, man. This is Pick and ban is a treat every time now. It's just, you never know what's going to happen. Okay. But we have traditional AD carry support on H2K. And then we have the Zix, which I guess in a way is a tr traditional bot laner. It's a traditional AP carry. Um, let's, let's talk about the Pike. I know you wanted to get into it. Yes. Talk me through this champion. So Pike, obviously the, the big thing for people who haven't really seen a lot of Pike is the fact that he can't really gain a, more HP in these games here. So items that give HP just gets turned into damage for him. So he's always going to be insanely squishy but he's obviously going to get a lot of DPS during the game. So there are 
different kind of builds that people go for. One of the, the big ones is the Duskblade Rush build, where it seems weird as a support. Yeah. But you're just aiming for magic penetration, lethality. I don't know what's weird anymore, man. 8.11 has has made me doubt hey, everything I know. That's just Pike. The crowd saying happy birthday to Shucks. You guys Very nice of them. Go spam her on you guys Twitter are great. with uh, the happy birthdays as well. But so we have the lethality build from Pike. Other option is you can go for more like standard support items that actually end up buffing up your teammates. But you just gotta remember, the HP is just gonna give you more damage and not actually make you more tanky on the side of Pike here. And if we look at the early game. Whenever I play against him, I always find him super, super hard to deal with in the first few levels because he's able to find engages either through dashing forward and once he ends up on the other side of you, you get stunned, or his hook, which when he uses it to all in, the range of he actually hooks you back is always the same. So if he's in melee range of you, he just throws you over the shoulder and you end up falling really far down in the lane because you have to constantly respect, okay, can Pike engage here? Is there a jungler around? So he's one of the best supports in the game at actually setting up plays for his team. However, he's really bad if he just gets poked out because he doesn't really offer then anything to his AD carry. Like Huge here. flame potential, yeah. You can see Promise Q and Sheriff already able to zone him back, but it looks like the Graves is coming forward. Memento, is he going to get that level 2 gank off? Sheriff stepping forward. Here Next we go. Axis. It's all the bait, baby. Forces out the flash. That will be the end of that, but that's worth it. All right, now Scout didn't want to go all in here. Could have flash forward before aiming with the hook here. We also get to see Rocket's team come from day one. It was a lot different. Uh, much yes. more what we would call standard. I mean, the Hecarim, maybe the Yasuo, that's a little different than what we would have seen in the spring, but still. It's true, they tried the Xyrocon as well in the bottom lane. Now it is a Zix for HeQ, so we, we are on an AP champion. However, one thing that is similar is it's a lot of damage and like strong engage coming from Rocket's side. They've clearly found a lot of success in their scrims. Run these heavy damage comps where you just try and burst the team down quickly as possible. Because this one, as we highlighted before, Lissandra Pike is the main engage tools. Follow that up with Ziggs old, Vladimir old, Graves old. Like, it's insane AoE damage landing onto a very squishy backline of H2K. Yeah, so as we pointed out, uh, Rocket, they're really going to be going for these picks to try and delete someone off the map. Probably his name will be Sheriff. On the flip side, though, H2K. They've got one big frontliner that's going to be Smitty J. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute because Blanc does get chunked out. Yeah, so Smitty J, they've also got Shook on this Nocturne. We didn't see a lot of ults out of him yesterday. What is he going to be looking to do? Who's he looking to delete? Well, seeing as effectively every single lane is actually gankable uh, for Shook here, depending on how the Lissandra ulti cooldown is looking, I think he can mainly look towards bottom side. That's the easy one. But even top, like, Cho'Gath can pressure Vladimir into a tower dive. We have seen that before with the jungler. It's really only if you dive to Lissandra, she ults herself. You might waste a bit of time, but I don't think Shook is necessarily looking to be too proactive early on. I'm just mainly looking at his ulti in team fights because we highlighted all the Wombo Combo AoE damage from Rocket. Mm -hmm. It's actually hard to use if you can't see him. That's and very true. A Nocturne ult is fairly long now. Coincidentally, it has the ability to make sure you don't see it. Exactly. And then, if HK can survive the initial all-in, when Ziggs ult, Vladimir ult, Lissandra ult are all being used, then suddenly killing the backline of HK is going to be a lot harder. And we know Smitty J is probably never going to die, because no one on Rocket's lineup actually wants to kill a tank. They all want to get to the backline with the damage. Uh, if they can dive that backline, doesn't really matter what's sitting on the front. Now, Selfie playing fairly aggressive on this Lulu. Let's see. Ooh. Dodges out the claw. Nicely done. Selfie, a lot of glitter nice. lines. That is a lot of damage. Good start oh, here. Aryan picks, man. Aim Blank, more iconic uh, duo. Blank already used his TP back to lane, so he has to go back for the second time now. I was, was going to talk about like throwbacks when I was talking about the Lulu mid, but of course the Lissandra is also something that we have not seen for a long time in the ULCS. I don't know how many metas ago that was. It's a lot of metas. Uh, it's been a while since she's really been considered a, a strong meta pick. Uh, there's always been... Some buffs happening like over the last many patches. Oh, let's wait and there see. Noskarin coming with the stealth. That's the W, obviously, of the pike. Yep. Going for uh, the ghost water dive. So there's a lot of ways you can surprise people. They're like stealth in, then you dash behind them with E, and then you can stun them. And then, as we talked about before, you can basically, right next to them, just hook them, and you can't miss it because they're stunned. And you just flip them behind you, and they're really far away from the turret all of a sudden. And there's a lot of damage that's coming in. It is a fun lane, though. Because Zix is not a traditional all-in bottom laner. He actually wants to just poke and push. 
See what happens here, Shuga's fighting. They're gonna poke, looks like they're getting pushed back right now. Blank and Memento separated, but in comes Nor Scarin. Do they turn around the claw going forward? Blank doesn't take it. Oh, Pike. Pike wants to go in. It's a fight over the Skull Crab. Gets the yoink back on the Lulu selfie. He no! follows the flash. It's gonna be first blood up top, but second soon to follow. Oh man, they skate. No, Shook. He's fine, oh. he's fine. But top oh. lane as well, Pyra. Prophet just solo killed Smitty J. We're gonna need to see that again because we were talking about how Cho'Gath can push in the Vladimir. Well, that didn't work so well. Let's see Norskaren going for Sheriff. He sees him. Throws the axe out. He's safe for now. Oh man, H2K were the ones looking for the fight. They were engaging. Promise you flashed forward. I'm not sure if the fear actually connected, but Norskaren showed up and then we got the first hook from Pike. In the EULCS, it landed onto Selfie. He flashes into the wall right after. Fantastic stuff from Rocket. 1,000 gold ahead. This is already looking good for Rocket to start things off. Now, yesterday was a nightmare scenario for them up against G2 Esports. If they can keep this kind of momentum going, they're not got anything to fear. Let's take a look at that replay up top again. All right, so it's actually Prophet just on the other side here. Smitty J trying to get back to his turret while also dealing some damage. And Prophet just gets too much free damage onto him. and. Smith J tries to run away, but I guess, yep, just pull through that one and take him down on the turret. Well played by Profit. All right, well, now we can put all those uh, crazy internet arguments to rest. Uh, Void Monster loses to Vampire. All right, was that a classic argument on the internet? Uh, very classic, yeah. Well, now we get, oh, no, Defeat did not connect from Promise Q. I think Memento just got out of range. And we're back into it. There's that big old frozen tomb. And speaking of big, Selfie, he puts a wild growth on himself. Let's see if he can whimsy his way to safety. Oh, he dodges does. the end of the line. Woo! That was close. Memento well, thought he was just going to continue say. running straight line. And nope, Selfie around the turret. That should have been a kill for Rocket. It wasn't. Nice dodge, though. It was a good dodge. Give some props to Selfie on. And we talked about this combo. Lissandra Pike together. Now, Scaren, whenever he goes mid lane, there are so many ways for them to force these fights with a lot of range to back it up as well. Selfie in the end gets out. That's a small win for H2K. Gets to stay in the laning phase. Meanwhile, the Draven is just stacking in the bottom lane. Sheriff has not been involved in a lot of the action here. I think it's 117 stacks at the moment. Early attempt by Memento to try and get the gank off, but yeah, otherwise he's been fine. This is the, this is the flip side of Pike going on a roaming spree for the most part, is that he's been able to free farm. Luckily, uh, Zix is fantastic at holding the wave on yep. his own. So in that case, we talked about before how Pike and Zix as a combination don't really want to do the same thing. Like again, Zix is poke and push and Pike is all in. But obviously the way it works for them is Pike leaves the lane Zix holds the wave on his own with the lost chapter that's already completed. And now Skarin then doesn't need to worry about losing a bot lane turret. Nice little hook. Yeah, promise you into fear though. And it looks like Sheriff can't get in to deal damage. There goes the Mega Inferno Bomb. Sheriff is popped low here. And I was gonna say, this is the nice thing about Ziggs, yeah, that instant pushback. He just has so much wave clear. Speaking of old metas, it kind of reminds me of good old season four, when that's pretty much whatever good laner would do. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Mid lane Zix every game now. There was uh, all the damage he could, could put down there. Everything used onto Sheriff will actually force him back as well. So Rocket, full control around the river. Around this time yesterday, I'm pretty sure they were down, what, 5, 6k gold? Different uh, different game. It was so It was a very different game. And, and I think they're definitely more in their comfort zone right about now. We, I like to see what they've uh, drafted here. I also like to see what H2K has been able to do. And look at the difference between how these guys played their first games. The longest game time was H2K's at 45 and a half minutes. I, I saw Frostgrave yeah. think about how eight, uh, Europe still found a way on 8.11 to actually have 45 minute plus games. But Rocket, they lost in less than 24. I don't know what's the most impressive. The fact you had the long game or the fact you lost that fast? I guess if you lose fast, you can kind of, you know get into queue faster, right? That's right. what I always say. Yeah, so you quickly can get to your team meeting and prepare for tomorrow. Exactly. That's actually smart. If you already know you're losing, might as well lose fast. Yeah. And they didn't even FF, you know, it was, it was classy. It was uh, impressive how fast they managed to fall behind in that game. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane here, Shook has sh snuck his way down. Now, Skaren is on a ward. Promise Q will get this control ward down. Let's see if Shook stays. If they can get a kill on this Draven, it is so huge for H2K. He's above 200 stacks already. Want to try to cut some of those down to size. Sheriff keeps on adding them up. Here comes Shook through the lane. Selfie spotted in the river by that ward, so they know, okay, they are looking towards bottom lane. Question he is, will he Q? dive anyways? Remember, Hiku has to stop watch here. Oh, what? hello, Sheriff. He steps far forward. Promise he's waiting and baiting in this brush here. He's going to have his ultimate. Big baits or Sheriff just getting a little bit too overconfident. New Why not both? get hooked into the turret. 
No Scarin. He sees Promise Q. Here we go. He's gonna yoink him right over. This could be a trouble right now. Megan Furnabomb coming up and he's gonna clip the edge of Promise Q's health bar. And in goes Shook. There's the stopwatch. Let's see who's oh, gonna go down. Oh, oh stopwatch from below. Not today. And it's a whirling death from Sheriff, but everyone makes it out alive. Oh, we already mentioned the stopwatches. They were key here. In the end, no kill for Sheriff. There's not cash in on the stacks. Rocket, they are currently sitting around, but they are bought and needs to go back to base. Draven continues to stacking. That was a big, big play here. Rocket just staying alive in the end. Oh, they're teasing us on this one, Deficio. So the goal does not change significantly. Still that 1,000 advantage plus the first Cloud Dragon up at the top. Not so much of a wet noodle fight. We already saw what Prophet was able to do earlier in the 1v1, but this isn't where the action is going to be. It looks like mid lane is the next stop. Because look at Noscarin on the minimap. He's on his way again. There's a ward, though. There's an H2K ward that'll spot him. All right, this time, should get noticed. Selfie knows. Clint is also ready for him. They're pinging around the blue buff where Fiddlestick is sitting. Okay, let's see if they go in for a bit of a fight here. Noscarin stepping deep. Control ward placed down by Promise Q. Gonna get spotted by Narskaren. Looks like the dive is on. Looking to take some stacks off the Draven. Mementos found him. Face full of Buckshot. That hook is not gonna connect. And it's collateral damage, not for the finishing blow. But should be bot lane turret. They have a Zix down here to execute it. Draven is back in base here. Well played by Rocket. They saw how much HK invested bot lane before. And when they return, they're already here with the jungler, mid laner, and support. So that's gonna be turret now for Rocket. That's another great thing about the Ziggs. You can demolish those turrets a little bit faster when you get them within the lethal range. So Rocket extending their goal to the first tower bullet. No Scarin. He's not stopping there though, looking for Promise Q. Spotted out by that control ward. And these are the moments where you absolutely hate playing against Pike. Because his bot lane turret is already dead. He is free to move around with Moby Boots. You always feel like, okay, he's around, he's nearby, and you know with the amount of CC he brings. He can really catch you out. You can see if they find Shook in here. Shook, he could be in trouble. Forced to flash the wall, giving over the Rift Herald. Selfie made an attempt to push Blank back, but it looks like they're just going to come and grab it right out from under H2K. Rocket taking everything on the map. Much better early game, and H2K, just like last split, continuing this trend of falling behind in most of the games, really struggling against aggressive compositions. And as we highlighted many times, Rockets, with the amount of engage coming, from their side can keep looking to make plays. Of course, also Smitty J dying solo top lane. That didn't help things either. It looks oh. like he's gonna die duo this time. Here comes a Vladimir, here comes Memento, flashing away from the end of the line. And there's even a Mega Inferno Bomb in the mix. Smitty oh, J silence. taking up, and it looks like the Vladimir is going to pop. A stopwatch of his own Shook oh, back, him. and they juggle the <laughs> aggro. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, Shook, no mana, no flash. He could not get close enough to actually finish the kill onto Prophet or onto Memento. Oh! Missed as oh. well. Oh, and he held it. Oh, and I he hope got he the was shopping, but I want to say that was calculated. Well, you know what? It didn't hit. They didn't die. That's two turrets now for Rocket. Bot lane, yes, Sheriff and Promise Q will get it. But Sheriff, he's still missing that kill. He has so many stacks on his side, and as long as Rocket is not what you want, Draven. You want a lot of stacks, but then you also want to. No, you, you want know, the want to kill, cash yeah. man. I mean, he's not going to bloodthirster yet. This is Rocket are charging ahead. They've got two towers up top to trade for the one that H2K have. That gold lead extends to 3,000. They have such a tempo advantage. And this is what we see now: Rift Herald getting two turrets for the team. Another kill top lane and Shook second ult to use. Oh, what's happening? There we go, Blank looking for selfie. Selfie. He's got the wild growth on. Does he have enough damage to push him back here? Here comes the claw. Blank still following. Selfie's able to two-step it out. He definitely knows his way around Lissandra. That guy, when he first joined the ULCS, Lissandra was pretty much all everyone played. That's yeah, very true, and Selfie, quick with the dodges. But Blank has been able to push in the mid lane again, together with now a Zix. And hey, remember guys, this is Zix killing turrets. Yep. He's completely unleashed because his own turret bot lane is gone. H2K might soon fall even further behind. Looks like everybody's heading towards mid lane, the place to be for now. The Dragon will be spawning in 45 seconds. That's a very important Mountain Drake. With Siege and Detention, we're 15 minutes in. The action doesn't look to be stopping. And it's very interesting that now we hit a meta here with a lot of these you know, big burst things, a lot of engage coming in. That stopwatch was actually buffed again, so it's eight minute cooldown on it. We've seen a lot more. It's been key in this one. Not as many as we saw at the beginning Not of as the many season, as first, let's, let's be honest. But. but it's been important in this game how a stopwatch from EQ in the bottom lane means he doesn't die to Draven that then takes the first turret of the game. Instead, the whole thing turns around, and by the time HK returns to that bottom lane, this is a couple of minutes ago, they end up getting forced out. They lose the first turret. That swaps Rocket to top side, and they grab another one plus a Rift Herald. So a stopwatch in the bottom lane 
on an, a gank from Shook ended up giving a giant advantage over to Rocket that could have gone into case way. Yeah, things can swing pretty fast. Rocket and Prophet Memento are going to be able to swing towards this Dragon Well. The rest of H2K are trying to knock down a tower up towards the top. A lot of question mark pinks flying H2K. They don't see enough people on the map right now. Looks like anything. that's about to change. North Scaring, HeQ looking for Selfie right next to him. There he goes. You can't miss those hooks. He didn't have the cooldown or didn't want to go for it. Instead, it was all about zoning. Can't away. miss it if you don't use it, Pyro. I, I mean, that is technically true. It but is very true. I wish I had a better response than that, nope. uh, other than to shake my head sadly. No one will ever flame you for missing hook if you just don't use it. Classic Blitzman. They, 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 trick, what they will right? do is they will say hook question mark. That might be one, and then you can just you know say you're lacking. Cooldown. Yeah. Actually, after Riot introduced the fact you can ping your your MS, the whole I'm lacking thing doesn't really work anymore. That's true. The same thing with ability cooldowns. Yeah, that's also a problem. Yeah, that's the real reason they put him in. Looks like HDK, though, are going to try to grab as much back as they can here. Just stealing away a little bit of blue buff. Let's see if Norskaren scares him off. He did scare Shook. Here comes Blank. Does he take the hook? He does. He finds the fiddle. The fear doesn't really matter. Gets yoinked back in, and that is a dead promise cue. From below. That was a very late fear coming in from him onto Lissandra here. Blank ended up getting a full combination onto him. Promise Q is now dead. Midland Toad is already gone. And here comes North Scaring. He flashes forward. There's a cleanse. Oh, there oh, we go. Right back in. Ziggs is still popping. And it looks like North Scaring tried for the deletion. And the same thing for Memento. Selfie is able to eke it out. That man has defied death so many times this game. We said there was a lot of damage on Rocket's side. It's five damage dealers. Uh, it is a more tanky supportive build right now from Noscaren, not rushing straight for lethality on his side, but I guess that's because he has enough damage on his team Memento. Oh, hello, flash forward, going end of the line. Looks like he might have gotten jabated though, because in comes Shook, looking to get some revenge. That is a real big nocturne, and Selfie is gonna find the finishing blow. All right, Memento, that one sucked. You went straight for a man, there was no wall around you to actually proc your Q, and then you died. I do respect the bloodlust, just not the execution. That's fair. The call made sense. The execution did not. Also, he didn't know Shook was there, but he probably should have known that he had a paranoia. That's true. He could have been around. Yeah. Either way, it should get on the board. They've got themselves a kill now. I mean, it's it's a far cry from getting completely back into this game, but it's certainly going to help your confidence. And normally, they have to wait a few more minutes before they start the comeback. It's the classic, you know, the enemy team. Oh, we're really? Oh, man, my watch is off. Yeah, uh, there you go. So let's see Memento again. There is no wall to instant proc your Q for extra damage, and Selfie just kind of walks out, and then, yeah, you did. The team can't really help you. They can't see a whole lot. And uh, that's a kill now for H2K. But as we said before here, normally, you're kind of waiting for Baron to spawn. Enemy team would then fail the setup around Baron. And then H2K got a big fight. Sheriff got a bunch of kills. And man, right back in the game. Can still happen here. They're down 3,500 gold. Sheriff is still sitting on a Draven without a kill. Yeah. 470 stacks. That's a feels bad, man. But what's nice is he hasn't died either. It's, it's kind of that. It's, it's, True. It's, it's the Schrodinger's gold. You don't know if you have it or you don't. I also have to remember if he can actually get a turret for himself, that's even more gold just for him because a lot of things that happened in the in the meta was a lot of the gold was now focused on a single target and not the entire team. So people were kind of asking for more solo carry potential. That was kind of introduced with how much gold one player can get. If there's a bounty, that's gold for him. He takes it down the turret alone. Nice stack of gold for him as well. He's a Draven, so again, he gets even more stacks at this point here. HK just wants the Sheriff to be the carry in this game here, and it worked for them last bit. It started the big combat. Yeah, and it's different than it's different than the the big one carry for support strat than we we've seen yeah, all over the place. That it's not stuff that loses all the time. it's not that kind of thing. It's more like no no no. This is the carry. He is a hyper carrying, or at least like somebody who can scale and snowball super hard. Let's type see. of AD carry. Now they're waiting in the brush here. Let's see if Rocket want to check first. Good Baron setup so far on the side of Rocket. We'll be able to start a fairly early on in the game. Memento on the graves here we know would be valuable. Let's see what happens to Bartlane card because uh, Smitty J, he's alone. Yeah, and there's a lot of people coming for him. Let's see if they've got enough to shred through the Cho'Gath. Health bar gets two-man knock up on the rupture, flashes away. The Mega Inferno Bomb comes in and he's put into prison, taken down to zero. Rocket invest heavily, but they do get it, and it looks like the tower is going to fall as well. And this just shows how much control they have. Like, they took five, six seconds to kill the Trogath, and no one on HK could get there in time to help. No one could push something else because they're just so far back on the map. Rocket continue the control. Blank did not want to go back on that one, so that's another kill, another turret dropping as well. 6,000 gold lead with the Baron alive. Let's see a play around it for Rocket, because when HK shows up, Lissandra Claw over the wall, and that's how you start your fight as Rocket. 
I am impressed with Rocket's calls this game, and, and you really have to just look at how this worked. They were one step ahead of the game, and Smitty J yeah. had nowhere to go. Look at the minimap. They had already pushed in top. They already pushed in mid, so they can go for the roam bot lane. Smitty J then gets a little bit surprised that five members show up. Can't get out in time. He dies, and nothing HK can do other than just see him die and the turret drop right after. So even further behind on their side, and now look at this. Here's what you're talking about. Baron set up H2K, they're healthy. Now remember, Baron, he has been changed. Of course, a little easier to take overall. Early game especially. Yeah, still, it's not as easy to take when, uh, you know, there's a big fat Cho'Gath and his team trying to deal you damage. And now classic H2K. They get ready to defend around the Baron. This is where they look for the fight to get back in the game. If Rocket execute properly, however, H2K will never get there. Draven is not on two items yet. He's missing, again, that one kill. And Hourglass is here for playing. That's a huge one for Lissandra. It's very true. Rocket, though, overall the stronger team. Level advantages on a couple of their champions. Not in the jungle, so if it comes down to a smite fight, it's not going to be a huge difference. Oh, that is a crucial war. Everyone, get out of the way! It's a surprise party of five! But it looks like they've already taken down two. EQ grabbing those kills right now, and Sheriff Smitty J Selfie all running for their lives. Scattered to the winds, and it looks like Memento's going to get blown up. Smitty J does get a big eat off, but there's nothing left for him to do but wave goodbye as death comes from below, courtesy of nor scaring. H2K thought they could surprise Rocket right there, but that's a very squishy fiddlestick jumping into everyone. He died instantly, no scaring one Sheriff. Oh boy, yeah, that it's a scary, scary scarecrow, but it doesn't matter when you just decide that your first reaction is gonna be punching him in the face. Yeah, that surprise party definitely backfired. I guess they turned on the lights and then they got smacked in the head. And oh, that that's what happened. They didn't it. use the nocturnal. Uh not in time. Well, they did, least. but you know, too. Yeah, early. let's see it. So here they're saying, let's go. So they kind of knocked her in all instantly, but he's killing the Rift Scuttler at first. Then they're all in. Promise Cube dies. They're actually near turret as well. I think that was just way too greedy. And Rocket, with all the damage on their side, they just turned it around. Only positive here is they killed the jungle. And that's <laughs> literally the only positive. Because that, that means that the Baron is not going to go down just yet, so it will be a little while. But Rocket, they've just had, had so much really good, or they've had so many really good proactive calls and reactive calls. Remember, this is a team that kind of was this sort of like ragtag talent factory is what we like to refer to them as. They didn't have the experience. That experience oh. from the spring split, it's shining through right now, Deficio. Well, if they can get the Baron, that's kind of the thing. We got to see them close out the game here. We have seen teams get ahead like this before. They are in such a good position. All their members right now are ahead. Enemy AD carry is not that strong. He has it's a 9,000 gold lead. I mean, this is the time in the game that Rocket lost yesterday. That's a good point. Right now, things are looking a little different. They're like 20k gold down. Yeah. These stats are going to be really weird when you get the average Rocket gold like difference at 20 minutes. Because one yeah. of them they were down 15k, now they're up. D like don't <laughs> don't give Trevor any more quick stats. <laughs> than he is. Uh, fun he fact. doesn't need any help. The Draven is almost on 600 stacks. Oh, jeez. And he's got a Hex Drinker, too. Yeah, but that's really not going to help him. That's what right I mean. Like, he's, like, when you feel like you have to build a Hex Drinker. Yeah, there's a lot of upfront magic damage. I think Sheriff's having not a fun game. I think uh, Rocket really enjoys the game so far, especially Pike here, who's been able to kind of sneak around and even found some kills with the old T. That's true. He's a Jarm's Fist as well. Yeah. That's oh, not going to hit. That Bone Skewer, though, is scary. It's a zoning skewer. It's a little bit too easy to predict, it. just because you see him kind of pull back with yeah. the hand there when he has to throw it. It's not like a Blitzcrank, but it's pretty yeah, easy. Maybe they'll release a skin where you can't oh, see they it. Find you can't use it in LCS. Oh, Selfie, pulling back. Here we go, looking to go forward. They've found the Lulu, and everything is popped to get him to safety, including that Blast Zone. Teleport, I, I would think he'd want to cancel that, yeah. That's a win for Rocket, though. TP on cooldown, Smitty J is still bot lane. They can start the Baron here, get ready to turn for the fight. Look at this here, Promise is actually recalling. Selfie has no summoners. This should be Baron for Rocket. Smitty J is nowhere to be found. He's down to the bottom. Lane. He doesn't have ultimate. Shook would have to attempt the Miracle Steal to try and flash the wall. What can Rocket do to try and prevent this from happening? Prophet is in the back, taking a little bit too much damage. However, H2K still hanging around. There goes. Oh, here we go. They turn it, and it was going to be a huge deletion. Oh my goodness! Just like that, two go down. Shook goes paranoia, tries to get a bit of a steal off, but it's not within lethal range. And Memento blows him away. And it looks like H2K are gonna say good night on this game. Smitty J trying to hang tough, last one to fall in this one, but he will surely at the end of it all. There we the go. Ace, and there's the Baron. And that's where we get progression. Spring split. We have so many Baron. 
Baron steals. We had so many teams losing the leads around Barons, but Rocket right here knew exactly what they had to do. The moment HK get close, you turn and you fight. They have so much damage against the back line. And it all starts with Prophet and, of course, EQ getting out here and landing the poke and the nuke. Suddenly, two members die. And now the next step is make sure Shook can't steal this Baron. And he flashes the one. And this was what's so brilliant is they don't put it in lethal range. And Memento says, that's fine, we can tango. And it kills Sheriff as well. Great Baron play from Rocket. H2K, the classic way for him to get back in the games, was just denied. And denial has definitely been the name of the game for these guys. They've had one tower, two kills in 26 and a half minutes. Rocket are running the rift right now. It is a massive gold advantage with the Baron. They're pushing in on two lanes. H2K need nothing short of a miracle to get back into this game. They simply need Rocket to slow down completely and not look for another play, but Rocket can tower dive. They have a lot of ways to start a fight with Lissandra, or That's like this. Huge. Here we go, look at that. Locking up the Cho'Gath, already down to half his health. He does take a bite out of Blank, but his health bar is gone. That Whirling Death, it just tickles at this point. And then keep on pushing. Norse Garen still hunting around for Promise Q. 40 seconds on Smitty J now. There's no front line on H2K. Ulti is not ready yet for Shook, and yep, uh, that's a Ziggs yeah. killing a turret. That's a charge. Goodbye. That's tower number six, and the Baron Empowered Cannon Creep doing its job. Untouchable oh, by the H2K look members at that. for now. Top wave is already set up. That's going to be free in hip for Rocket. H2K, they are so far down. They should not be able to fight back here. We'll lose at least two in hips. H2K seeing their base cut through. Not a lot they can do to answer. Sheriff still unable to find that kill and having to flash away. Promise you come around the side. Let's see if the flank. Oh my goodness, Shook just got turned into dust. And so is the rest of H2K. That double kill going the way of Memento. Selfie says, where the hell is my team? And at this point, they're back in base. They're all dead right now. Where the hell is his base? That's the triple kill. That's the surrender. 27 and a half minutes in Rocket. Turn around their fortunes on day two. What a great turnaround from Rocket. They got stomped the hardest yesterday, and now they actually just stomped H2K. All right, so I got, a, I got a quick one for you, Deficio. Did you know that was the fastest game time of day two? There we go. Biggest goal lead as well. I love it. And it was a big one. Rocket can be proud of the way they won that game. Yeah, so they did a lot of cool things in the early game, but really the big thing for me, and the thing I'm so happy to see, was how they used that Baron setup because they didn't give H2K the chance to steal it. They've learned, they've evolved. They jump out, they kill H2K, they don't let Shook in when the Baron is low, and that's where they deny that traditional comeback from H2K's side. Oh yeah. And we gotta say, H2K getting punished. Again, kind of for falling too far behind in the early game. I like the composition that they were bringing, but as you pointed out, it was a lot of squishy members. They were very, very diveable. And for Rocket, I mean, it's a, it's a two-phase plan, man. In spring, get that experience. In summer, you just start winning, and they are off to a flying start. Now, it's only one and one. Obviously, it would have been nice for them to win on day one. Sure. But this was an incredible performance out of them up against H2K. Also, really fun composition. I loved it, With man. With like... Got to, got to cast a pike. That's always a good day. Insane amounts of damage. Glad to see Noskaren bring out the pike. Roam towards the mid lane quite a lot for some plays, and in general, uh, Rocket, last, but they obviously started out fairly well. They were actually sitting towards the top of the standings the first few weeks. H2K started out 1-7. and seven. And then made their roster swaps, had an incredible 180. Now they're starting 0-2. And That's it's rough. not like they had a tough schedule. They played Giants and Rocket. Two of the teams you would say H2K of last, but towards the end would be fine. I mean, they were actually against. right in the same range. I mean, you, you think of all those teams, and they were all like just in that same barely into playoffs range. It's a, it's a bad, bad start here for H2K, and they have a lot of things they need to work on, but Rocket on the other side, they're going to be happy. I like the changes uh, from, from yesterday. Didn't have to go Zyra Khan this time. I think a Zix pike lane was, uh, was great. I also like the fact that Memento gets to play something like Graves. Like, I, I feel he wasn't in his element when he had to play more supportive junglers. I think when he wanted to carry... He tried on the room. I mean, you know, that was bad. We, we don't talk about that one. Um, <laughs> but no, I like the Graves. I like the Graves. I mean, it was good. He went a little too deep sometimes. I think he thought he was Norse Garen. Said he was able to get out just fine. He didn't have a hook. He didn't. That's he did have a dash, did. though. That was nice. Hook or gun. Apparently, the hook is best. But uh, uh, yeah, well, in League of Legends, uh, where things make sense. In this game, though, uh, Rocket will look back at week one. Uh, they will look at yesterday and say, okay, everything went completely wrong. Let's try and ignore that. Right. Everything went correct in this game. And I think in the main thing Freddy will look at is the Baron setup. 
Once again, Rocket loves to buy control wards, and then how they execute around it. That is a good, good thing for this team, and I just want to see next week, do we get Pike again from Noscaran? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, do we get it banned? That's kind of the thing ah, I want to be yet, asking. Not I, yet, not yet. I mean, Noscaran's like one of those guys that can take a champion that no one's seen him play, and then just kind of come up massively with it. Like, he's he's got good playmaking potential on just about everything he's tried. Yeah, I mean, all the players actually did well. The Lissandro pick worked. Mm -hmm. uh, something that I did not expect to see too much of. That's fair. Uh, I mean, that was definitely one of the big surprises was the mm -hmm. fact that it was up at Lissandro, up against the Lulu of all things. And he kind of always had assistance too. Like, there was so much more map movement from Rock at that game, especially in the laning phase. But H2K. It was pretty good, man. Oh. Not from H2K, though. Hey, no, no, no. No, that's, uh, that's going to be one of those weeks where going back to what review what happened is really going to suck for the players. Because not a lot kind of worked for you. Sure, well, we'll see if they come back stronger the next week. Now, don't forget to hit us up at LOLE Sports on Twitter with your player of the game. Your options for this one are Profit, Blank, and Norskaren. I think I know who I would uh, put my money on for sure, Deficio, but I don't want to influence the fans. Now, for more on Rockets win, let's check in with Law and their support. Thank you very much, Pyra. I've been joined by Nurse Karen here. Congratulations, first victory of the splits. You must feel pretty happy, but how did you prepare for this one? Mm, yesterday, we had a pretty tough loss versus G2. We kind of got smashed, and we weren't really prepared, I think. Like, me and Hiki should have uh, prepared much better. We didn't, uh, yeah, we got just smashed by Phil Six and Heimer. So we just, yesterday, we sat for like two hours or three hours just practicing TV2 uh, in the team and just kind of did what we should have done a long time ago and like figured out the meta a little, little bit more. Is it hard for you to apprehend the draft and how you do it considering the state of the game right now? Uh, yeah, right now it's still uh, confusing for us since we haven't like, I mean, no one has really figured out what the best picks are and you can play so much actually. There's like, you can play 10 times more champions than you could like last patch, so what lane? Yeah. So it's kind of hard. And yeah. you, you proved that today by picking Pike. You're the first yeah. LCS player to play this champion. We know it's a flex pick, but you chose this as a support. What is its utility here as a support on the bot lane? I think it was kind of cocky by them not banning Pike, versus, especially when they play Phil 6. I, I could have picked a lot more to beat the Phil 6, and I just picked Pike because, I mean, I practiced him a lot, but I should have practiced more, I think. But I think he's just really good. He has a lot of CC, he hooks, he's good versus range champions, and yeah, I think he just brings a lot of pressure, even with his stealth and roam abilities. And your game was, for me, like a perfect example of what this patch can bring. How do you feel as a player knowing that everything can be decided in the very first minutes of the game? It feels more stressful, I think. The game times are a lot shorter, so uh, I think a lot of players are going to start playing a little bit more safe, because yeah, if you make a mistake and you boom for the rest of the game, so I think just people are just going to play a lot more safe and, yeah, just need to learn how to snowball. Well, you'll have time to learn that. Nonetheless, congratulations on this one today. Thank and thank you again for joining me. We're going to take a short break, and right after, it will be Misfits versus Unicorn Develop. Don't go anywhere. More scared. Do they turn around the claw going forward? Blank doesn't take it. Oh, Pike. Pike wants to go in. It's a fight over the Skull Crab. Gets the yoink back on the Lulu selfie. He no! Flash. It's going to be first blood up top, but second soon to follow. Oh. Oh my god, I'm trolling. Oh, it is a crucial ward. Everyone, get out of the way! It's a surprise party of five! But it looks like they've already taken down two. PQ grabbing those kills right now, and Sheriff Smitty J Selfie all running for their lives. H2K still hanging around. There goes the oh, here we go. They turn it, and it was going to be a huge deletion! Oh my goodness, just like that, two go down. Shuko's paranoia tries to get a bit of a steal off, but it's not with the lethal range, and Memento blows him away! And it looks like H2K are gonna say goodnight on this game. Hey, 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 what the hell is my team? And at this point, they're back at base. They're all dead right now. Where the hell is his base? That's the triple kill. That's the surrender. 27 and a half minutes, and Rocket turn around their fortunes on day two.